Hey guys, it's Mark with Spagaver Backpacking. How are you doing today? So today I wanted to take you out in my backyard and show you a project I started working on this morning. I've got a nice backyard, I've got a fire pit, we like to hang out back here, but one of the things I don't have is I'm one of the few houses in my neighborhood that doesn't back up to the woods. Uh, wish we did, but we don't. So we don't have any trees or anything in our backyard, and that's one of the things that I've really disliked about my backyard, and I haven't really had a good place to hang my hand in hammock. What I've done is I've gone between a couple of the, the fence posts before, but it doesn't really work all that great. There's definitely no way to hang up a, a tarp doing it that way. So this morning I woke up, I went to Lowe's, and I got myself a couple of 4x6s and four bags of quick reet, the uh, quick setting kind. And so I dug some big holes, put some posts in, poured in the quick reet, put some water on it, and now we have some nice, secure, nice secure places to hang uh, tarp, hammock, and uh, get out here and do a little bit of a little bit of hanging. You can see, I've got it set up right here over on the side yard, uh, out of the way so that my wife isn't upset with where I put it. Uh, so let's take a look. So here is my tarp setup. Now right now it's just strung up; it's still in its snakeskin. But what I wanted to show was I use just single lines on each end with Dutch titanium tarp flies. Okay, so I've got that on both ends. And while it has advantages, it also has disadvantages. See the easy to use tarp fly. Just connected straight to the D-ring on the, on the tarp, tied in with a uh, double figure eight, uh, something that's not gonna come loose. And then it runs through and it does that. And I've got enough line on there that most of the trees that I've, I've encountered in the woods uh, have worked, but I have found some that haven't. It's also one disadvantage of this is the ability to center it. So here we've got the, the tarp up and it's pretty well centered, but if it wasn't and we needed to shift it down this way, the way that we'd have to do it is because it's already up and strung, we have to come to this end sneak under here, loosen it up, okay, so let some line out on this end, tighten it back, cinch it down on that tarp fly, walk to the other end, loosen it up, cinch it down, and then tighten it back up. So it's a couple of step process, and if you've got your hammock underneath here, and you're trying to trying to center this, you know, you can be going back and forth quite a bit to get it, get it centered where you want it. So there are other options out there. Rather than the single loops on either side, you could go with something like this. This is the Dutch continuous ridge line. So let's go ahead and string this up and take a look at what's in here. Okay, before we put it up, let's go ahead and see what's in the bag here. So in the bag we have the line. So it's 30 foot of what I did was grazing it and yellow soft shackles. Now what the soft shackles do is they give you a way to connect your tarp uh, after you've got the ridge line up. So we'll take a look at those in a little bit. On one end it has a Dutch wasp, titanium wasp, and I was actually surprised. I, looking at the videos, seeing these, uh, I really thought that it was going to be bigger than what it is, um, but it's really not much bigger than the tarp flies. And on the other end there is a Dutch clip. You can see it here. A little Dutch hook. Uh, so this will wrap around the first tree, hook on itself, and then we'll run the line. So let's go ahead and get this out. So I'm going to go ahead and string this up right above where the current one sits. So here it is. Uh, it's just a little hook. So what you'll do is go around your, your tree, your post, or whatever. Try not to drop it like I did. Um, and then just clip it on and then it goes in and you can cinch it down so it's right up against the, the tree. Now you'll run the line across the other post. Okay, so I have adjusted where the wasp is on the line so that it's where it needs to be. Now, it's easy to adjust in the configuration it's in right now. You can just slide it along the line, no problem. The zing it here is actually really pretty smooth and pretty, pretty easy to adjust. But once you have it adjusted, what you're supposed to do is get a little bit of a bite on the tail end and loop it up over the tail 
and that locks it into position right there so that when you pull on it it's locked in and so now this isn't going to move on the line at all and that's what the little loop the little hook on the the tail is for so then you can just take it come up to your your tree, your tree use the little hook on the front of the wasp go around the wasp and pull it tight just like you do with the tarp flies so let's take a close look at that. so here's what it looks like all done up and here's what the tarp fly looks like so you can see it's still got a wing just like the the tarp fly and it hooks in okay to give us plenty of room to adjust and to take a look at this I moved this wasp all the way over really close to this pole now these poles are only about 13 feet apart so really out in the wilderness I'm gonna be looking for something that's about 15 feet apart so this isn't really exactly how I would do it but then along the lines you slip your soft shackles so you've got one on each end and so I will slide these down and then let's take a look at how these connect okay so on the single lines it is just sewn or tied into the buckle so if I go ahead and release this so now this tarp is just hanging here I can leave this line attached it's not a big deal so the soft shackles the way that those work is you have uh, really a line through a line here that creates a, a loop and you have to loosen it up so here are the two pieces line through a line and a knotted a line with a knot on it so what you'll do is you'll position it over your your tarp put it through place the knot through the hole it's created in that loop and then just tighten it up and now it hangs and you can adjust where it is you've got a prussic knot here uh, that you can slide along the line and when tension gets pulled on it it pulls into the center if you look here you can see that it pulls into the center of that and creates a good bite on the line and so now if I do this on the other end as well we'll get to see how this lines up okay so now you can see I've got both ends hooked up so I've got the old line that I had just kind of hanging here and I've got the new soft shackle with the prussic on the zingit line so we have a continuous ridge line that goes all the way down through with a wasp on this end and another prussic knot. So here, if we were in a situation where the hammock was pushed this way, we just simply slide that down, grab this end, push it to where it needs to be, make sure that everything's tight, and now it's nice and centered. It's not centered right now, but you get the point. You know what I'm talking about. Easy to do. One of the things I've really noticed and I like a lot so far the difference between this little tarp fly and this wasp right here is if you take a look, if I disconnect this, right in the corner of the wing, there's a little notch. And so when you put this in there, it is a solid bite that it gets in there. The fly doesn't have that and it's kind of a pressure fit, whereas this one has almost like a, a verbal or a, a, an audible snap when it snaps in that you can really tell that it's it's locked in there. I was curious what the weight difference is between the the single lines I was using and the Dutch continuous ridge line. Uh, both of them have two pieces of titanium hardware. This one has the two tarp flies. This one has the wasp and the Dutch hook. Uh, but it also has the two soft shackles. But I think that this line is probably heavier on this one. So let's go ahead. I've got this zeroed out. I've got the scale, scale zeroed out here. We'll take a good look. And we've got 20 grams with what I had previously. And we have 20 grams. Um, wow, that's pretty cool. 20 grams. Ah, 21, okay. Really, really close. So, there's no weight penalty for going uh, continuous ridge line. 
makes it a little bit easier. So I really want to give this a good try out on the trail, see how it works out for me. Uh, I think it could be a winner. Another cool thing is if you don't know how to use any of these pieces that Dutch sends with his stuff, he always sends these little cards. And they're, they're good. They're like a, you know, a, a laminated business card almost. They're, they're glossy, nice, and it gives you step-by-step. -step. So for the wasp, it gives you the step-by-step -step instructions how to use it. For the Dutch hook, it gives you the step-by-step instructions there. It tells you how to connect it. Uh, really good, good stuff. It sends it all in a nice nice bag with the instruction cards in there so that you know how to use any of the stuff that he's sending you. So now that we've got this up here, let's take a look at some of the stuff that I've got on here. Uh, looked at it before in a couple of our videos, but I want to show you this, this Cuban fiber made by Hammock Gear. Not only the tarp, but also the snake skin that I've got on there. So let's take a close look at the snake skin. So here is the, the Hammock Gear snake skin. It's got the zip or the uh, the shock corded end here to cinch it closed and when you open it up you can see it's I don't know, six inch diameter there and so it'll swallow up that whole tarp now once it's open you just kind of start pulling it come down to the end you just grab it and bunch it all up down here at the end and now the the tarp is free to fly and ready for you to set up Right now you can see, I actually stored it with the, the doors uh, tied back. So if I go ahead and just disconnect those, now the doors will just hang. Okay, so there's the, the tarp just hanging here. We'll go ahead and get it set up. So I've got these Bargo titanium nail tent stakes that I like to use, and I have some thin cord attached to them. Uh, and I like to just grab them all knock all the dirt off of them and wrap them up this way and then when I'm ready to use them I just come up my tarp find the point that I'm going to tie out tension it out get the stake in and I angle it I angle it like this away from the away from the uh, the tarp so that when it pulls it's pulling through more of the dirt goes through the tarp worm, pull it tight, okay, so I'm pulling it tight, and I make a little, little loop, slide it over the tarp worm, and now it's on. So let's take a close look at that. So here is the tarp worm with my line through it. Easy to strike, just by pulling it, you strike it, and then you can make any adjustments you want. Okay, so when you get it where you want it, I just grab above it, get the tension off of it, and I make a twist, put it over it, pull it tight, and now it's locked. Real easy to use. And I use shock cord on this end. While Cuban fiber doesn't stretch the way that still nylon does, it still gives me a, a lot of flexibility and allows really a little bit of a security factor, uh, a safety factor on the, the tarp and puts less stress on it by allowing it to flex a little bit when the heavy winds come in. Uh, but with sill nylon, if you get this nice and taut, as the sill nylon stretches, it'll take up a little bit of that, that stretch in the, uh, in the shock cord that's on there. There you have it. It is up. The only thing that's not up right now are the pullouts. So I actually have some shock cord here that goes between the two pullouts. So what I like to use that for is I'll pull it out, make a twist in it, and have it go over my, uh, my trekking pole. So my trekking pole will be pulling it out, and then I'll take a, another stake with a line, and I'll go from that down to the ground at an angle out, pulling it out. What it does is it really extends the inside width of the, uh, of the tarp for you. So let's talk about door management for a second. So I'm inside of the tarp, and on one side I've got the doors just hanging loose. So you can see that they're just hanging there on both ends. 
just hanging there. But on the other side, the doors are pulled inside. Now I've shown how to do this on the outside, but realistically you're probably going to want to do it on the inside because that's where you're going to be. And if it gets to a point where it's raining and you want to put the doors out, you don't want to go outside to have to undo them. So here's, here's how I have it. I have shot cord with a loop sewn into the end. And because of the size of the knot on there, I just take and slide the other one through. So right now, if I let go, the doors can hang. So let's take a look at how I put it up. So I grab both, both of the doors, get a hold of the line. Okay, so I've got the lines here. And then I just stick one through the other and let the tension hold them together. So the knot is just through there and the tension pulling on both sides holds it together. So that's how I keep my doors up inside. Now when it's time to deploy them, just simply grab it, push the knot back through, and now they're, they're dry. So now it starts raining out and you want to put your tarp doors out or it's really windy and you want to block the wind. So here's how you do it from the inside. Again, I'm going to grab my shock cord. I've got my loop. I come over and I'm just reaching outside and I've got that tarp worm that I already showed and I just loop it over the tarp worm. And for me that works. I grab the other one, come to the other side. I don't even really have to get far outside to do this. Hook it over there and now you have one end of your tarp completely closed. And you see you've just got the little hole up at the top where your hammock can come through. Other side is still open, and you can do it exactly the same way over there. Now, if you're in a really, really windy, really stormy situation, and you want a little bit more security, you can actually take from here and come down more at an angle. Okay, so down more at an angle to about here. So just about straight down from the corner of your tarp and stake it. And what that's going to do is it's going to put more tension along these edges right here, the vertical edges. Uh, so pulling down is going to put more tension on there to keep the flapping from occurring. So that's, it's going from this angle here to this angle down, which puts the tension on this edge. Got it? So today I put up the new continuous ridge line from Dutch. It's got the Dutch hook on one end here and the wasp on the other end. I also showed my original setup, which is these lines with the tarp flies on each end. So really, it's about the same as far as the amount of hardware goes. There's two pieces of hardware on both of them. The difference is one of them has a line that goes the full length. The other one has individual lines on each side. The advantage to the full ridge line is adjustability. It's really easy to just walk up, slide a prussic knot one way or the other to get a taut pitch and to get it centered over your hammock. Whereas with the single lines, the individual lines, you have to go back and forth, make adjustments in order to get it centered. So I, I think I'm going to like this. I'm going to go ahead and use this, take it out on the trail with me. I think next week I'm going to go hit the AT. I may have some people joining me, may not, maybe solo again. Either way, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to have fun. But I'm going to try this one out, out on the trail, let you guys know how it goes there, give you some more, more input on it. But for now, uh, I think I'm going to like it. I think it's going to work out well. And I've got my new setup here in the, the backyard. So I've got, I've got the two poles up. And it's definitely wide enough for my hammock and my tarp. I was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't be quite long enough for my tarp. But turns out it's just about perfect for this. Um, so soon, probably tonight, I'm going to throw the hammock up here and see how, how it works out. So look forward to it. Oh, as always, guys, uh, if you like what you're seeing here, do me a favor. Go down below. Click on the subscri subscribe button. If you subscribe, it does a couple of things. It tells me you like what, what I'm doing. It gets you involved, gets you included in the drawings that we're going to do. You know, we're a little over 300 subscribers now. 
Next milestone is going to be 500, and I've got a giveaway that we're starting to put together for that. So you'll be included in the uh, the giveaway as long as you're a subscriber, and you get notifications every time I post up a new video. So do that. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, leave me feedback. Let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and uh, get out there and do it. I'll see you guys down the trail. Thanks.